you have a question for Dr. Umar? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Dr. Umar, do you see a future for blacks in America? No, I don't. I see a temporary future as serfs and third-class citizens. We're no longer second-class citizens. You've, we've been replaced by Mexicans, Latinos, and homosexuals. We're now third-class citizens, and that's the future for blacks in America. Up until you've been exterminated. So I think by now they've probably gotten to a point where we might not survive the 21st century. In other words, by the time 2200 comes around, in about 87 years or so, uh, there probably will be no Africans left in America. But will America even stand by then? Say that again? Will America stand by, you know, 2020, 2025? Because it's Will up. America still be standing by? I don't know. But here's what I would say to that. If America falls, that might be a good thing. Well, that would definitely be a good thing. But guess <laughs> what? It could also be a bad thing. Because if it falls and we're not ready to take it over, it's going to fall to Arab supremacy or Asian supremacy. But the white and man so, won a war with that. Yes, um, the white man won a war with the Arab and the Chinese. As a matter of fact, they sent a missile defense systems around China, Russia, and Iran to start a third world war. Well, they don't really want, no one, no one really wants a third world war okay. because most countries have atomic capability. And the problem with atomic weaponry is that it doesn't matter who fires first or who fires second. Everyone dies because you cannot control a nuclear war. So that's why America tries to take away nuclear capability from anyone it doesn't like because they don't want to be forced with a situation where they have a standoff with a country they don't like who also has nuclear capability. See, part of the reason that they moved in on Saddam and Gaddafi and Bin Laden, all people who they helped create, by the way, is because they wanted to make sure they didn't get to the point where they had nuclear capability. Gaddafi had the money to become a nuclear threat, and America knew it. And that's another reason why they moved in on him, in addition to the fact that they were trying to build a Central African Bank and Florida Telecommunications Network. But he had enough money to become a nuclear threat, okay? Bin Laden, possibly Saddam, they said, was working on it. See, here's the, the world is run on a bully system. It's, it's run just like the hood. Uh, it's a bully system. I'm selling crack. Like you selling crack. This is my hood. Get the hell off. I got an Uzi. You trying to get an Uzi. I'm going to find out who's selling you Uzis, and I'm going to tell them that if I catch you selling Uzis, I'm not going to sell you none of this other stuff that you need that I got because I want to keep them weak so I can control them. That's why America got the issue with what? North Korea? Now they say that the North Koreans got nuclear capability. Bottom line is this. Any country where nuclear capability, you can't defeat them. You know why? Because if you threaten to push the button, they got a button they can push to. It doesn't matter how small the country is. A nuclear shower will take out a whole nation. It doesn't matter how big or small. So it doesn't matter who got the nuclear capability. The fact they got it automatically means that you have to stand down. And that's why China in America, that's the new Cold War. It's not as cold as America and Russia, but it's cold. Because neither one of them could really do anything to the other on a militaristic level because they both have nuclear capability. But the white man is saying, I will tolerate that from China because it ain't a damn thing I can do about it. But I'm not going to tolerate that from that Arab, from them Arabs. Okay? I'm not going to tolerate it from them East Indians, although they say Pakistan got nuclear capability now. Okay? So the problem is ain't no Africans got no nuclear capability. We don't want nuclear capability to destroy anything because, as I said, you can't really control the targets of that type of a bomb. You saw what they did to Japan in World War II. I mean, it's, it's, it's catastrophic. It's an it's a inhumane... All weapons are inhumane, but that's a really inhumane weapon. 
Okay, you still got children being born in Japan with birth defects from parents who were hit by some of the fumes but didn't die and that kind of thing. Nothing grows on the ground. You can't even drink the water. I mean, it, it, nobody wants to go there as far as atomic weaponry goes. So the reason we want one is so that we can have the freedom to operate. Let me give you an example. If Ghana had nuclear capability, America couldn't tell Ghana to do shit. Europe couldn't tell Ghana to do shit. Because they say, well, we can blast you atomically. And guess what Ghana will say? We can blast you atomically. And if we both blast, everybody dies. So we are at a stage right now in human history, military history, where, ironically, the worst weapon in the world, the worst war weapon, is preventing war in many cases and points. That's why you only see United States infiltration in countries who ain't got atomic weapons. You ain't going to never see them go someplace with a place with atomic weapons. You ain't going to never see them going in China. You will never see them going. You ain't, they couldn't beat China anyway. China got more people, more technology. China is the white man's worst nightmare. But you'll never see him go nowhere else either that has atomic capability because you cannot. You can't beat the people with an atomic bomb unless you somehow find a way to destroy it or take it away. So what everybody's trying to do right now, every nation in the world is trying to do, is they're trying to get nuclear capability. Not to shoot nobody, but to make sure nobody shoot them. Everybody has figured it out. If you get nuclear weaponry, you can tell America to kiss your ass. You can tell Britain to kiss your ass. You can tell France to kiss your ass, Portugal, Spain, and Belgium, and Italy the great European so-called powers. But without that atomic weaponry, they could do what they want to. And that's the problem with Africa. 55 nations, ain't nobody got nuclear capability. I hope that made sense to you. Uh, the person that dialed in, uh, Klondike.